This episode of The Art Assignment is brought to you by Squarespace. Today we're in Columbus, Indiana, inside of First Christian Church, which was designed by famed architect Alil Saarinen and completed in 1942. It was in the courtyard lawn outside of this church last year that designer Jonathan Neshi cited his installation of aluminum tables titled 100 Variations. This work was Neshi's response to this remarkable site, which employed the golden ratio in its design. We're going to be meeting with Jonathan and talking not only about that project, but also about his wider interest in using systems of design like the golden ratio as a starting point Point to experiment with new materials and processes. He's primarily a furniture designer who uses a variety of industrial materials and fabrication processes to create minimal and precise forms. The latest geometric system he's worked with he calls Present Perimeter, and it's a collection of tables and mirrors and other objects that combine a particular set of shapes into a wide range of variations. Jonathan has found this way of using systems of constraint to be exceptionally productive, and he's going to offer us an assignment to see if this holds true for you too. My name is Jonathan Neshi, and this is your artist. Assignment. Coming off the 100 Variations project, which is it was such a beautiful big event that I was searching for what's next, not knowing what's next. Um, and my uh, son last year was in fourth grade. He had a fourth grade geometry project. Um, it started off as Tangrams, which is this really cool system of you can kind of create anything out of Tangrams. It's a it is a, a known system, kind of building blocks where you can make whole alphabets or you can make people on a boat. Like it's really kind of a broad system. The next homework assignment for my son was, uh, the next night was, he had to combine uh, 10 forms, uh, a hexagon, three half hexagons, three rhombuses and three triangles to find the smallest perimeter. And they, they sent him home with a, uh, uh, a template where he would have to figure out the smallest perimeter, and I didn't know how to, like, how can I figure out the, the per smallest perimeter use this template? I'll be here all day. Um, so we, me and him worked on it together. We drew all the shapes in AutoCAD on the computer, and he told me which ones to make. He said, well, it'd be smaller here, and then there's a command in AutoCAD where you can find the perimeter. And when he went to bed, I went to town reconfiguring them, and they just, they're beautiful forms uh, coming out of these 10 shapes. Um, so I just kept going. It was just uh, twisting and turning them and reconfiguring them, and they just created this beautiful language that was unlike anything I saw before. Your assignment is to create a work of art using the present perimeter system. The system includes one hexagon, three half hexagons, three rhombuses, and three triangles. You can use any material, process, or scale. Bonus points if you can make a piece of furniture using the system. John, I love this assignment because I love parameters. Yeah, you are a fan of rules. Uh, I have to say that I also am. I mean, I, for instance, I, I really like genre in fiction writing because uh, there are conventions of the genre, expectations of the genre, um, and that limits you in some ways, but it also creates a lot of freedom because you can work within them um, and sort of know what you're supposed to do, like know where you're supposed to get. Yeah, and there are so many different ways to create things and to make art and to just sit there at a desk and write about absolutely anything or make absolutely anything. Yeah. The possibilities are too great. So to have a set like this to work from, I think is really freeing. So Sarah, there've been a lot of artists over the years who've sort of worked within their own rules. I'm interested mm -hmm. to see what your art historical precedent is for the day. I have a couple good ones. In the mid-1960s, Saul Lewitt began making sculptures he called structures by focusing on the form of the cube and using it as a basic unit to apply a system or logic to it. Like in 1974, he made variations of incomplete open cubes, for which he investigated all of the possible permutations of a cube not being complete. He made a diagram showing all 122 of them and built structures that he displayed on a gridded platform. Central to the development of minimal and conceptual art, Lewitt prioritized systematic processes over so-called expression and famously said, the idea becomes a machine that makes the art. Triggered by an interest in heraldry and how symbols are devised to represent families, Alan McCollum explored in the late 80s how many unique shapes could be created by the combination of 90-degree arcs and straight lines. He cut combinations of the elements into hundreds of plastic templates and made drawings from them by hand. McCollum made thousands of these drawings, but his system was capable of producing unique works up into the billions. Both of these artists employ rational systems that challenge our assumptions about 
about how art should be composed, generating artworks whose significance far exceeds the simple concepts that brought them to life. There's so many material possibilities. Uh, it's really any material, which was the beauty of the system, is that it could be any scale, any material, any process, where you can then be free to not have the form hamper your uh, exploration. So like, if you want to experiment with a collage, you can cut this out as templates and make a collage, or if you wanted to experiment with uh, onyx. You could have it cut out of onyx. So it really kind of frees you up to then like really push different materials or try new things that you haven't tried before. I had these 10 forms cut out of steel. Let's rearrange them. I think it's important to have a framework, but you can also break your own rules, which I think is fun. Um, What's great about it is it, it gives you this foundational background where you can build on, like on the fly. The reason I can come up with the concept so quickly is because the foundation was already done. So if I meet a new vendor, I meet a new fabricator, I don't have to start from scratch. Like I can build on what I already did, and then there's this constant thread through all the work. If I worked in acrylic or if I worked in aluminum, you can tell that it's my work because of the, the system. This episode of The Art Assignment is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an easy way to create a website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features a user-friendly interface, custom templates, and 24-7 customer support. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com forward slash art assignment for a special offer. Squarespace. Build it beautiful.